Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Royal Libraries. My name is David, I'm part of the education team. And today I'm going to be telling you a great story. A story of an infamous man. A man named Vlad Dracula. Now, Vlad Dracula started his life a long time ago in the 1400s. He was born a prince of a country known as Wallachia, which is now known as modern-day Romania. Now, he was not an only son. Uh, you see, he had a younger brother known as Radu the Handsome, and he had an older brother known as Mercia the Great. Now, his father, whose name was Vlad Dracul, this is going to get very confusing very quickly, uh, he was king of all Wallachia. Now, he joined an order of knights known as Order of the Dragons, and that's where they get their name, Dracul. And that is why Dracula, so Dracula is the son of the dragon. Now, as Order of Dragons, they were sworn to fight all heretics and all those who are not Christian. However, this is a big problem for Dracul, because his country is neighboring the great Ottoman Empire, a humongous empire, and it had ambitions. It wanted to spread its way into Christendom. Now, he could hold up his orders own, fight against the Ottomans, but there's no way he's going to beat them. Vallaca was a very small, fairly weak country at the time. And so he decides to talk. To do this, he leaves his eldest son, Mercia, to look after the country, and then he takes Radu the Handsome and Vlad Dracula down into the east, where he sits and talks to the soldiers. However, halfway through this, this, this meeting, the guards come in, they grab Dracula, they grab Radu the Handsome, and they drag him away. And the Sultan tells Dracula that if he wants to see his sons again, well, he has to give him 10,000 ducats every year and 500 children for his arms. Now, Dracula didn't have much of an option. And so he agrees to these terms, and he leaves the Ottoman Empire without his sons. Now, usually when we have prisoners, we like to torture them. We we'll have to lock them away in deep, dark dungeons, never to see the light of day again. However, the Ottomans have a plan, a clever one at that. See, their plan is to grab every child of the kings and queens surrounding their empire and treat them like their own. Because then, when these children grow up, they will like the Ottomans. And when their parents die and they inherit those lands, the Ottomans are no longer surrounded by enemies, but surrounded by allies. And so Radu and Vlad had a very pleasant time in the Ottomans. They taught how to read, how to write, how to pray. And Radu, or Radu, was quite kind to the Ottomans. He quite enjoyed their company. And as a result, became quite a quick favourite amongst the court there. However, Dracula, Dracula was a bit older. And Dracula realised that he was a prisoner in everything but name. And so he was vile. He would spit at his tutors. He'd kick him and scream and curse. And as a result, well, they lost their patience. So they started to beat him. They started to whip him. And it's here that Vlad is said to have learned his cruelty that he will use later in life. Now, walking away from the Ottoman Empire, we're going to go back to Wallachia, where something terrible is about to happen. An old knight named Hunyani, a great old crusading knight, has decided that Wallachia is now enemy to Christendom. That Vlad Dracul has betrayed his oath of the dragon, and he must be got rid of. And so Hanyadi sends assassins into Turgavista, the capital of the time, and they find the king and they kill him in the very streets that he was meant to rule. Now the eldest brother Mercia is also captured, but he's given a much worse fate. He's dragged away and buried alive. And then Hanyadi places a man named Vladislav II upon the Wallachian throne and he thinks he's won. Now news trickles over to the Ottoman Empire where Vlad hears about this, this crime against his family, and he swears vengeance upon every man, woman, and child that partook in this particular assassination. Now, because of his uh, unruly temperament, the Ottomans realize the only thing he's really good at is fighting. So they made him an officer of their arms. He then, on top of that, was sent off to the borders where none of the civilized folk have to look at him. This was perfect for Vlad, because when he hears about this assassination, he simply takes the men under his charge and he marches them into Wallachia. There he cuts his way through his own people and finds himself face to face with Vladislav II. And well, uh, after capturing this usurper king, Vlad starts to earn his nickname. Vlad the Impaler. Now, to impale someone is very simple. All you need to do is take a stake. Here's one I made earlier. It's a large wooden stick. 
you sharp it down to a nice sharp point, and then you uh, feed a victim. In this case, Gladys down the second. Now, to impair the man properly, you take the steak, you bring it back, and you plunge it into their stomach, place it in the ground, you lift the thing up into the sky, and there you let them hang. Now, if you're lucky, you die within moments. However, there are reports of people staying on top of these things for alive for three days. Three whole days of agony. And well, how to put it, you don't earn a nickname by doing something once. And Vlad, well, this became quite a hobby of his. Now, he finally taken back his country. And so, he needed to make it strong again so he could fight the Ottomans. And there were three things that were wrong with his country right now. One, the nobility, the men and women who have betrayed his father would almost certainly betray him, so he needs to get rid of those. Two, the beggars, the beggars and the vagabonds. You see, Valakia was plagued by, well, for a lack of a better word, a plague. And he thought that it was these beggars that were spreading it from town to town. And third, well, Valakia was full of gangs of marauding men and criminals who would raid and take whatever they liked, hurting the hard-working peasant that supported his country. So, the first plan he comes up with is to get rid of these betrayers, these boyers, the nobility. And to do this, he hosts a huge Easter celebration. And it's a wonderful thing. The women are singing, the men are drinking, the kids are dancing. Everyone's having a fantastic time. However, Vlad gets up, sneaks out of the celebration, goes down into the streets to turn the beast there. And he comes across the grave of his eldest brother, Mercy. And there, he unearths it to find that the rumours were true. His brother had been buried alive. And every woman and child and man up there, they were responsible for this. And so he gathers some of his guards. The guards get up to the celebration. And they surround every man, woman and child there. And once they gather them all up, they split them into two groups. Now if you're young, strong, you were sent off to the Fort Punari, or the real castle of Dracula. And there, you were put to work for weeks and weeks, months and months, barely any water, barely any food. And eventually, those beautiful Easter garments of yours would have rotted off your back, and you would have perished with exposure and exhaustion. And then to add insult to injury, the bodies that were lying around would be dragged out of the fortifications and buried into its very foundation. Now, if you were uh, old, weak, feeble, you were shown a mercy. You were taken outside the city of Turkmenistan, and there you were impaled. <laughs> Not much of a mercy, I suppose. But hey, he's got rid of the traitors. And anyone that's left is now too scared to stand up to him, so now the latch is one step closer to being strong again. So the next thing he needs to do is get rid of those beggars. So to do that, he sends out a letter to all of the lackey, and he says, If you can't feed yourself, if you can't feed your families, come to my mansion. I've placed a great deal of food out upon the table, a great feast, so that you can all feed yourselves and be happy. So, he goes out, sends his letter to all of the Lakia, and eventually all the beggars are back onto a rock up at his, uh, at his mansion. Now when they arrive at the mansion, they open the doors rather gingerly, only to be pleasantly surprised. There are, there are tables everywhere, food of wine, and well, they sit down, and they drink and they eat, and Vlad joins them, and it is a really lovely evening. However, as the night goes on, the men, women, beggars, they're all just getting a little bit too full, a little bit drowsy from the wine. Vlad stands up. He walks out of the hall, out of the mansion, closes the doors behind him, locks him in place, and then sets fire to the entire thing. And he stands there and he watches as the flames grow higher and higher, and the screams get quieter. But hey, the beggars are sorted. No more plague, no more disease. Malachi is one step closer to being strong again. So all that is left is the gangs. Now, Vlad is a pragmatist. He realised that these bandits are pretty good fighters, and he needs a decent army if he's going to fight the Ottomans. So he sends his soldiers out there to capture them. He doesn't kill them straight away, no, he gives them an option. 
He says, join my army or be impaled. Not much of an option, I'll admit, but luckily most men saw sense. Most men joined his army. However, one man didn't. A rather old man, a rather stubborn man. And when Vlad offered him the choice, he simply turned around and he said, you have no authority here. I've been living here longer than you have. Get a run along, little prince. Now, Vlad, to his credit, didn't act harshly. He didn't pay him, at least. No, he, um, well, he took the old man and he boiled him alive in a big old cauldron. And then, when the flesh dripped from his bones, he took that flesh and force fed it to every member of that man's gang. Hey! All the gangs were sorted. Those that heard the story are too scared, they join his army. Those that are left, they run away. It's fine. The Lakia is now strong again and they can fight the Ottomans. And so when the Ottomans turn up to, uh, to take their 10,000 ducats, to take those 500 children, Vlad says no. So what do the Ottomans do? Well, they act like children. They ransack the entire countryside. They take all the gold they won't give and they steal the children from their very beds. Now Vlad cannot stand for this. So he sends his army up to the Danube River and there he waits. He sends men out over the other side to burn down all the villages of the Ottoman Empire, tries to invoke some sort of confrontation. And well, the Ottomans, they respond because they send 60,000 soldiers to go and face Vlad's armies. And Vlad stood there on the banks of the Danube River and he only had 30,000 men and most of them were peasants, not fighting men. But they were ready to lay their lives down for their country. Now the Ottomans try and cross the river, but Vlad and his archers stand their ground. They draw their bows back, they loose arrow after arrow, and the Ottomans are driven back. It looks like Vlad is going to be victorious. However, it was all a bit of a ruse. You see, the Ottomans had sent a much larger force up the river. They had crossed elsewhere and had fortified themselves, digging into trenches, placing down cannon and gun. Before Vlad could, could do anything about it, they had already set up this fantastic defence. Now he tries to defeat them. He charges headlong with his cavalry into this fortification, but is knocked back. And at that point, he decides the best course of action is to retreat into his own country. Now, when he goes back into Wallachia, he does something strange, something peculiar. He burns down every village he comes from. He poisons every well, he slaughters every animal, he salts the very earth. Now why would you do that to your own man? Well, it's a clever little plan. Because it meant that if he left nothing behind but a wasteland, the Ottomans had nowhere to sleep, nowhere to eat. And they became hungry, they became scared, they became tired. They decided to break up into smaller groups of men, and that's when Vlad would strike them. And he goes from the trees, he would charge out, cut his way through the Ottomans, drag their bodies back into the woods, and then put them further up the trap. And he would impale them there. Can you imagine that? Being a lonely Ottoman soldier, starving, cold, hearing these horror stories of a monster that you must fight, and then seeing your comrades being impaled in front of you. It was not a good life for them. But the Sultan was determined, and he pushes on through the lack of so deep in fact, he arrives outside of Turnbista. And that's when he's met by a forest. But this isn't a forest of trees. This is a forest of the dead. They say tens and thousands of men, women and children were impaled in front of this city. And the Sultan lays his eyes upon this, this filth, this horror, and he can't stomach it any longer. And he simply takes his arm and he turns around. And he leaves Malakia. And so Vlad, Vlad was victorious! But there is a moral to this story. You see, if you rule through fear, if you rule through dread, they're not making allies, they're just making very quiet enemies. And the Ottomans realize that they can fight fire with fire, so they send something else. 
they send Radu the handsome. Another legitimate heir to the Valachian throne, one that will not impale you, one that will not kill you or murder you, and soon Dracula found himself very much alone. Now, we don't really know how he died. Maybe he died in some sort of skirmish against the Anacellus. Some report he had his head cut off in one last desperate fight against the Ottomans. Some of them say he ran away into his castle and simply hid there until he died of, of age or illness. Some people say he didn't die at all. Some people say he's still out there, stalking in the dark places of the world, waiting for unsuspecting victims so he can drag them away in the pit. Although I think that's just an old wives' tale. I won't worry about that too much. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The story of Vlad Dracula, one of history's most infamous villains. Thank you very much.